Hi guys, I'm Philippe Albuquerque driving the number 10 Konica Minolta Acura DPI team car. So let me show you a little bit around. Obviously now the car they're doing the setup, uh, we just finished FP1. Uh, we have this cover because that's where the juice is, like about the, the springs. Well that's where you keep your blankets. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like we tried to cover that a little bit. So big discs obviously, uh, super important. We, we paint this so they can see when it gets too hot at the brakes and then obviously it will affect um, the, the performance of it. So you know when the, the paint is different, they know just know that. Now are these, are these carbon brakes? Yes, and uh, the, the sweet spot of them working is from 400 degrees onwards. So under that, it's, it's just pretty, just nothing happens. It's just like super, you, you press the brake, it's like pressing to a wall in and out of a nothing. But obviously with the friction, just spikes it up and massive braking going on there. We have a turbo engine car and these guys just... And that's the 3.6 liter, correct? Yes. So then we have here the turbos going on here. And this is the system going on, charging on the turbo. There is one there and another one here. So we, on the weight, it's super important on the car to be super out and super as low as you can Absolutely. because if you put this up here then it's just like too much of uh, weight on the top which makes the car balance worst so the front obviously not the brakes yeah then now it one thing I noticed usually in road cars the rear brakes are a lot smaller than the um, front brakes um, not so much here these look to be roughly the same size so well actually normally the front brake should be always the ones that should be bigger because it's like a motorbike you know like a motorbike when they are braking they're wheeling it up because when you brake the all the weight comes forward and when it comes forward you have more, more weight so you can put more friction in there so you have less locking so it's a little bit like us we need like to find a sweet spot but normally we are talking about brake bias it's like 55 percent 56 because that's the weight transfer even if you have like the engine in the back but just yeah. the aerodynamics that this is the main um stopping power on the car so yeah. the front brake should be always bigger than the back ones yeah and that's what's fascinating is on a road car you'll have something like 70 even more than 70 percent of braking force on the front axle so the you have still have all the weight transfer but you have such much better weight balance that you can still use the rear brakes more effectively uh yes yes and no but okay because it's a it's another topic it's very interesting on on, on to the brakes so basically here we don't have abs so when in a road car in, in, our, in our normal road car you have abs so AB, you just shoot your brake hard and because the car is softer and the engine is in the front there is a lot of um, weight um, and weight transfer as well because the car is soft everyone feels that the car does this when you are in a road car and when you brake hard even if you are about to lock the abs will do the rest of it wow. and you should have something in the back here because the car we make the car super stiff there is very minor weight transfer we still have minor weight transfer and then we don't have abs so we cannot lock the fronts because once you lock the fronts it's like it's a big lock and then we do damage the wheels so it's a fine tuning there but definitely if we would have abs i'm pretty sure that we would go a little bit forward so make the abs more intrusive to do the the fine tuning of the performance of the braking okay so it's it's a very good topic so and then obviously this is the cooling so yeah. then it's again talking on the brakes it's super important to have them on the right spot on temperature so we cool on the front of the disc and this part goes to the caliper of the disc which i can show you oh, there and yeah. it goes uh, um, cooling off the back part but as well this section here of the caliper of the pads and the caliper to cool it out it's very important it's interesting so and now where are the shock absorbers on this car because obviously we normally see them right here they're nothing there yeah so um so it goes down into here and and you can see i don't know yeah there you go then you have well that that's the throttle this is the damper that is going on there like you can see the blue one you have another one there down there and then you have the roll bars which is this actually yeah. you can check this this is the roll bars oh. of the car so then you just take it out and then they work inside here That's how do they work so basically it's like a formula one car and a single seater car and it's just across the road there is an indie car then so basically 
the system is like this and the force comes through this one here as higher it goes it compresses the third the suspension which is the damper and then we have the third element which <laughs> We now we're getting complicated because <laughs> the, the third element it was something that was discovered because so basically a, a normal car let's say so you have the suspension right on the sides and when people go in it compresses the suspension right and and then when you're cornering you are leaning on the suspension so then you are limited about these cars is super sensitive and aerodynamics the lower you go the more downforce you have because the car is super close to the ground and it sucks right it sucks the car to the ground so then they invented like years ago already a third element what is the third element so you can lower the car as much as you can so when you go on top speed when the aerodynamics is the maximum the car will sit on this third element at the top speed it will not go under that ah. which let's say two millimeters from the ground which often we are when we have a bump we touch the ground but it sits there so when you brake hard it does not go lower it's super stiff and then when you get out of the high top speed like when you go to 150 kilometers per hour the car raises up because you don't have the compression of the downforce so then the car rolls again uh, yeah. but in the meantime you manage to go with the car super low on high on high speeds make sense yeah. so then the car is super low and you can gain it if we didn't have this third element what it means that it would just continue to go down with a compression and then you will be bottoming so then it means that let's say the third element would be here the car would continue squatting 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 so then what it means is we, you needed to rise the car to compensate in the end of the straight to be here. Very, so, very interesting. That's that, that's a difference. Anyway. All right, let's take a quick look inside this car because so. this is not your typical HVAC system with dual climate control. I mean, look at all these buttons and yes. switches and dials you have here. Yeah, so There's so much to control. Yeah, now they are doing the setup of the car, so they put the 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 weight of the driver in there with this with these bags here. Uh, okay. Know, how many how many bags do you weigh? It's the, yeah, I don't know. How many bags? Six. I weigh six bags. Philippe is six <laughs> bags heavy, everybody. So, yeah, we need to control the weight. So whenever we had a lot of big meal, maybe it's a bag less than this. <laughs> anyway, so we have the steering wheel here. This is the brake bias that what we're talking about. So we go forward to the right and yeah, rear yeah. to the back. Then this is the brake lights and TC when we see how it evolves the traction control oh, okay, through okay. the corner. This is the vents for air so it's super important to have air circulating for the driver yeah otherwise it gets too hot because even race car drivers need to breathe we eventually yes <laughs> yes so that's the fia reader so whenever it's a yellow flag from the team that's from green, the, that's yeah, green over that's there green. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more informative for the driver what's going on on the track if it's a yellow yellow track if it's yeah. a red flag or whatever it's the series uh screen okay. obviously then we have the camera there we have another camera there yeah uh, uh, for a TV crew this is the rear view mirror uh -huh. which we then we this is a great one the which we then we have on the top here it just shows there and it's a yeah. fish eye camera so yeah. you see it really really well um, then on the steering wheel obviously we have a lot of buttons but it's once you understand what it's, what is in going on there it's pretty interesting like so basically radio you which you use a lot radio and pit limiter so it get out yeah. of the way okay. flashing when we have a gt car and we try to hey we are here yeah. then um this is actually ot overtake button we should be liking this but it does not make make much so doesn't matter is that now does that give you um a temporary boost to power i wish no, <laughs> it's it's more psychological for the driver to see on the dash saying overtake engine. You know, it's just it makes nothing. Or you just push the button yeah. and then have a drink in the car. Yeah, overtakes yeah. I mean, I keep pressing it, but it does nothing. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, then we have the wiper. So the the when it's raining and drinking system. When you are drinking through here, you take okay. this hose yeah, yeah. and you put in your helmet and you drink water. So it's just. It comes a pump, which you can see down there, the water down there. Yeah, yeah. And it comes the pump, the water, and it gives you water. Um, and what about the red and blue levers down so, there? Yes, yeah, so that's that's a very important topic there, because <clears throat> that's the roll bars. Ah, okay. So, soft, softer is to the front, and stiffer is to the back. So now we are on position 4-4, four, four, 
and, and, then, then, and then is blue front, red is rear? Or? Yeah, this is front, okay. this is, the other one is rear. And then you play with the bars as you like through the lap. So you keep playing with it and what's what is better, especially in the first sessions to learn for which corners. For example, in, we are here in Detroit. First two corners, they are pretty fast, fourth gear. You want to maybe go a little bit stiffer to not upset the platform. And then for the slow corners as the third sector, maybe you go softer so the car rolls more over the bumps and it, it gets better. So we're, we're in Detroit. This is a pretty bumpy track. How often are you playing with those bars in a given lap? Yeah, we, we so it's kind of tricky because it's a street course. You don't have much time to yeah. change the bars yeah. and then go back on the steering wheel and go back again. So it's kind of tricky. And when the car is loaded, you cannot change because it becomes super stiff. So you need to be on a straight to be able to change those bars. Um, yeah, the door closes here, which then becomes super, super tight. Um, it's important to be a small guy, to feel, to be comfortable in the car. Otherwise, you're going to be like just folded in there and then touching the, with the, your knees on the top of this. Yeah. So it generally looks like a pretty cozy place. And it is. you, you and Ricky are not the same height. So how do you adjust for your comfort versus his? Yeah, that's a good one. So we call it baby seats. <laughs> so as I'm smaller. This is Ricky's seat, so when I put oh, okay. my one, you can so see you this. So you get a different pad. We have this Velcro here. Yeah, yeah, I, don't yeah. have, I left my one in the in a pit wall, so we, I will put a seat that will just go and inlay here. Super easy to put in and out, so for the driver change. And it just makes me reach the pedals, literally. Gotcha, so, gotcha. <laughs> but this car, particularly, is a very small car, so Ricky does not have much room to be comfortable. He needs to fit however he goes. Well, that's his fault, though. Yeah, that's his fault. That's yeah. not my business, anyway. <laughs> so, and that's pretty much it. And then the rest of the the, of the buttons you will see these rotaries here and here that's all down to traction control okay. for different phrases like uh, strategy is the turbo engagement if you want to engage super super strong or just a little bit delayed when you have like old tires um, Drivability is for the the tipping of the throttle, like how, how strong you want it to go in. Because sometimes when when your new tires, the rear tires takes it better, like yeah. a, a stronger and more aggressive drivability to get out of the corner. But as it goes on, you have wheel spin. You can go up on traction control, but you can as well help how aggressive the engine is going to help traction. So okay. pretty much that. There is as well like just the main dash, like it's made for the mechanics data fuel consumption the fuel pump house yeah for the, oh yeah we have the r there which is reverse page tc off it's just like more alarms yeah. and that's pretty much it it looks like a place to keep pretty busy well felipe felipe albuquerque and ricky taylor's conico minolta arx05 race car thank you so much for giving us a slightly closer look at it yeah sure thank you guys for watching